Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at another metal build figure by Bandai and this is the Gundam Device Exia. Now we've taken a look at the Exia and its variants on here a few times already so if you want to check out those as well as the Astraeas that are available as well as the Junimus repair as well, that is all on here. And I will mention, I got this through Bai, so if you're looking for one of your own you can get one too. And I also just noticed that the biggest ever, it must be the biggest ever, metal build drop came out very very recently which is the GN arms for using with this that is ridiculous that is a master grade ish sized GN arms metal build figure and that automatically got me thinking it's like it seems like Bandai to machination seem to have all of the rights to Exia when it comes to around the 1 100 scale mark because Bandai Spirits the model kit company that makes the Gunpla just won't touch it for some reason or another which absolutely kills me because imagine just how cool a master grade GN arms would be. That thing would be colossal. It would be awesome and if they're making it as a metal build action figure, why not make it as a model kit? That would be so awesome. Such potential, absolutely wasted. Maybe we'll get a master grade Exia 2.0 and a GN arms in future but something tells me we won't. Bandai's turned so racist against master grade. Anyway, let's jump right on in to the aesthetics. So on getting this big little masterpiece out of the box, this is what we've got. Very similar to what we would have seen with the standard release of the Metal Build Exia and looking phenomenal. Once again, the colors here are amazing. We've got that nice kind of shade of blue that almost has a kind of transami purple-ness impregnated into it. Overall, the colors look fantastic. We've metallic, matte, the actual shiny glint of real die cast metal, and of course those absolutely phenomenal looking GN condensers all over the body and up on the head. Once again, absolute perfection, but this is very similar to what we would have seen before. Silhouette wise, looks wise, the works. So what makes this into the device Exia as opposed to the standard Exia? Well, that comes with what we've got inside of the packet of accessories. So let's bust those out. So when it comes to the accessories inside this box, as you'd expect from a metal build figure, this is an absolute ridiculous spread. So we get a whole bunch of stuff in here, including the parts that make this into the device Exia, including that almost amazing Exia looking backpack, a multitude of other awesome equipment, and a huge giant buster sword, or should I say Rasta sword, I think it's called in this one. On top of that then we've got a full action based display stand just like we would have seen with this entire line so far. But yeah first off we're going to pop this open get that stand ready for use. It's the same stand we see most of the times in these particular figures. These are phenomenal. They're great quality, robust, strong. We've got a little bit of a Gundam Exia design on the bottom part and when it comes to the upper section we've got all the moving bits to change the angle, extend it, retract it as well as change the angle up top. But yeah, taking a look at these accessories, first we're going to go with what makes this in to the device Exia. So these figures do have countless additional stuff with them. So if you do want to make a standard Exia out of this particular figure, you can do that. For example, we don't just have the regular backpack. We also have a standard GN drive that is totally upside down. Let's try and put that in the right way. So that pops in just like so, locks in and then you can close it. So if you want a standard Exia, you can do just that. We also have the full Exia loadout of the GN Sword, GN Long Sword, GN Short Sword and the Shield. So if you want a standard Exia loadout on a standard looking Exia, you can do that with this figure. However, we would have seen that already on the standard version of the Metal Build Exia. So let's stick to what makes this the device. So flip it around to the back once again, let's get that GN drive out of there. So that holds in quite well, but not difficult to remove. I don't know why, but always with these metal bills, the butt flap is actually separately contained. It's not actually attached inside of the box, which I always think is quite funny. And another thing is, and Bandai Spirits, the model kit company, really need to uh, take note of this one. We've got a V-fin attached to his head right there, and a spare one inside of the box in case you have a mishap. That should be in every Gunpla. Should be. But yeah, first up we've got that cool backpack right here. Now, this blows my mind and one of the main reasons that I really needed to have this particular version of Exit in my collection and why it should totally get a master grade too. I know I'm gonna completely overdo that sentiment through this entire review but this is phenomenal. 
First, it looks like the thrusters off of the amazing Exia, but on top of that we have one of my all-time favorite Gundam things, or mecha things in general, a pair of fold-out sub-arms like this. So this essentially is not the Gundam device Exia, it's almost the Gundam Exia rebake. So these little arms are small but robust. This is a nice metal die cast segment right here. So it does mean this is good and strong. It has tons and tons of articulation all over the place so you can get whatever you want out of it. This segment up here doesn't open up on its own. You just have some alternate versions of it depending on the weapon you want this to hold onto. But that right there is so, so cool. Just getting that tucked back in. Awesome. So attaching this into the back of the XA is super simple. This attaches in somewhat like the regular GN drive, but you have to make sure those little GN drive clips are lined up beforehand. These all go inside of the actual backpack itself like this, and then it just clips on and holds on very, very nicely. Looking absolutely fantastic. I will also mention that this is compatible with the Astrea. So if you get the Metal Build Astrea, you can attach these backpack segments right into its backpack which is really cool. Also, a lot of the celestial being weaponry we would have seen across the line of metal builds are usable with these, or should I say, with this particular figure, especially its backpack right there. So you can use all of the parts from this Junimes Astrea all together, which is pretty awesome. So there's the metal build Exia with the G and device backpack attached. Now, I always thought Exia itself was pretty much a perfect Gundam design. I didn't think it was actually missing anything until this was added. I know the amazing Exia has something similar on it, but there's so much going on with the amazing Exia that it does not really look like Exia per se in a way. This right here is just taking the design of Exia and enhanced it in my personal opinion. It really gives the overall silhouette a bit of an X feeling. Those almost wing looking backpack binders up behind it just look so, so good. This looks phenomenal. Let's keep on getting this loaded up. So that right there is what the device Exia looked like on the ground, but what does this look like up in the air? Because with a little pair of wings like this, that is exactly where it belongs. So grabbing that action base, there is a little bit of an adapter in here to attach the Exia onto it. This holds on absolutely perfectly and looks fantastic. And that right there is what the metal build device Exia looks like up on a stand. No equipment, no nothing, just the Exia and the device backpack. This is angelic, awesome, and I can just imagine those absolutely spilling GN particles all over the place like wings. This is so, so cool. So the next thing in here that is unique, making this the device Exia, is this right here, this absolute giant buster sword or great sword of a weapon. This is incredible looking. So this right here is the Proto GN Rasta Sword. And this is so nice. I especially love the way they've almost smoked out or matte affected the inside of this blade. Like it's got a kind of cool filling up of glittery parts. That is a terrible explanation, but this thing is ridiculously beautiful. This right here is all the detailing we would have seen on the actual mobile suit itself. The nice white decaling, the metallic silver gunmetal paint, the nice matte blue paint, all of the little dots of detail with the various little decals all over the place. And like I mentioned, the blade on this is phenomenal looking. It just catches the light ever so perfectly in that kind of pearlescent smoky kind of way. So first up, when it is not in use, you can just flip around Exia just like so. The back section here should remove, and yes it does, it removes ever so simply. And we have the option of this little storage segment right here. So you can just slide the Rasta sword in like so. This does have a little bit of articulation, and this just replaces that part we just removed. So when it's not in use, it can be stored right in the center of the back like so. Very nice and symmetrical. That looks so good. That's pretty much the loadout that Bandai have right here. So that is the Rasta Sword on the back and Bandai's standard loadout of GN Sword and GN Shield on the actual body and the subarms with the beam sabers. The other option for using this besides sticking it in the regular old hand is we can grab some of those sub hands or sub arms from up in the backpack. So on moving this out like so, all you have to do is swap out the sub arm manipulator just like so to the bigger one. The smaller one is for using with the beam sabers. 
or actually maybe it's just for storage, not sure. But anyway, you can just pop the big old sword right on into them like so. So that means those subarms do have the strength because they're die cast metal in order to actually hold onto this big whopper of a sword, which gives you cool images of Exia literally just floating there. Not using its actual main body at all, and its sub-arms doing all of the fighting for it, like some kind of absolute badass. That's pretty cool. This looks so good. Makes me wish we had two. Pumping this into the hand is super simple. It just involves grabbing one of the holding hands, popping it on like so, and then just sliding the sword into it. This figure so far has no issue whatsoever holding on to the weapon, even at extended holding positions like so. This looks so good in the hand. This is a massive, cool weapon that suits Exia down to the ground. And once again, posing this is super, super simple. And there's more than enough strength in the figure to hold it in pretty much whatever pose that you want. I will mention, however, though, if you're not too happy with it, kind of holding onto the weapon on your shelf, there are some support arms included for using with it too, to support the weapon. So from here on out, I'm just going to load up the device Exia for the way I'm going to display it up on my shelf. So there's a whole lot of stuff in here, a lot of which we would have seen before with the standard version of the Metal Build Exia. My single all-time favorite Gundam weapon is the GN Sword, so that is definitely going on. This attaches on the usual way, that is a holding hand to be held in the hand, and then you've got that cool mounting segment that mounts it right on into the forearm, so this holds on rock solid for a ridiculously cool dual blade wielding version of Exia. That looks so fantastic. Next up then in here we've got the shields. Now these can attach onto the sub arms like so and you can actually attach them on while these sub arms are folded away. So you could have yourself some kind of armored wings. Of course the usual attachment point is doable as well. That is the forearm right here. They just pop in just like so. They don't necessarily get in the way of the sword, so you can have the sword with the shield. You could do what Bandai did themselves and pop this big sword onto the backpack and then you've got the space for the shield there. Just like we've ever seen with this Celestial being metal build line so far, there's just ridiculous amounts of choice across the board. So in here we do have beam sabers once again, same as we would have seen before. We've got four in total, two long, two short. When you're using the device backpack, I don't think you can actually attach all of these, just two. Wait, it actually does look like you'll be able to get all four on here, so let's try and get that one in, yeah? No problem at all. The backpack is not getting in the way. The next two attach on these little pivoting sections right here. That's one attached on. Next up there is number two. These also have up and down and side to side, by the way. So there's the up and down. And there is uh, the side to side. Next up then we've got the GN long and short swords. In order to attach these onto the hips, which is all I'm going to do in this video, I'm not going to actually attach them into the hands. You just pop off these little caps, pop on the little extended segments for attachment, and then they just pop on just like so. Same as what we would have seen before. So yeah, that right there is going to be the loadout and the pose that I'm going to keep this up on the shelf in. If you want to see more about the actual core of the Metal Build Exio, what it can do, what it can pull off, what all the smaller accessories do, then you can check out the full review that I did of that before. This right here is like that kit, just enhanced to the next level with some cool new concept ideas that we never would have seen in the anime. This looks absolutely fantastic if you love big swords, especially ones with clear parts, this is definitely the figure for you. As if for, well, this will ever get some kind of master grade or even smaller, high grade, etc. release as a model kit, that is yet to be seen. More than likely, we won't see something like that, but we did eventually see the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom, which is similar in nature, not exactly, to what we saw with the metal build kind of version. So maybe we'll get an MGEX crazy off the wall Exia sometime in the future that might do something similar. But for now, this will just have to do, and it does that exceptionally well. Once again, I got this through Bahi. Thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gundam reviews, and I'll see you next time. Once again, this video right here, and none of these videos would be possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and here on the channel memberships, including Ten Soldier YT, Caleb Engelhart, Dashil Marmion, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, Lauren Seahack, Orgy59061, and Van Fawn.